I take it as my responsibility to actually be a custodian of the land, to use the best principles, uh, the best knowledge, the best information that's available to improve the land and leave it in a better place than when I found it. In this part of the world, things get dry very, very quickly. You don't have to have rain for three or four weeks and it becomes tinder dry. My aim on the farm is to really, really bring it up as far as I can to be an absolutely pristine environment with diversity. I'm working on protecting the creek so that the animals don't go into the creek and damage the banks, getting more vegetation into the creek, attracting more birds, more of the small reptiles, more of the small animals, and also planting lots and lots of trees to ultimately generate more shade because in these hot days, Shade is a very, very important uh, requirement for, for your cattle. You're relatively new to farming. You gave up city life for farming six years ago. How have you found the transition? My whole life was manufacturing, engineering, product development, a technical, the technical level. My transition into farming was bringing in that kind of knowledge to farming and realizing that the natural world doesn't quite work the same. And fortunately I've adapted and um, the experience is a, is a whole new, a new meaning of life to me. Uh, it's wonderful. <laughs> Come boy, let's go. After three years on the farm, you switched to cell grazing. What triggered that change? Towards the end of 2019, the drought was really, really starting to bite. Things were getting pretty bad and I was irrigating every single day, spending lots of money on power and water. In September 2019, I got an email telling me about a one-day workshop and it was titled, How to Drought Proof Your Farm. So I thought, wow, I'll be in on that. <laughs> Tell me how to do it. And basically that was my introduction to regenerative agriculture. The workshop was facilitated by Brian Wellberg Brian teaches uh, the Alan Savory Holistic Management Framework. He went through a few very basic things about regenerative agriculture and it really turned a light on it. It made absolute sense to me because when I was using fertilizers, I was, I was kind of concerned, not only the effect that it might have on the environment, but also the effect that it would have on me personally breathing this stuff. So I started to build my knowledge. So coming from a person who knew basically nothing about farming, no botany, agriculture, agronomy background at all. I started to learn about regenerative agriculture and what I like about it is it's, it's not prescriptive. Uh, it works on some very basic principles. I use three basic principles which I can easily remember. The first is to keep a diverse number of plants and grasses green and growing. The second principle is to protect the soil by minimizing the use of fertilizers, herbicides and pesticides, as well as mechanical impact. The third is to manage your animals so that you don't overgraze and allow the grasses to regenerate. But all those three things are tied together. None works without the other. With regards to protecting the soil, what's your philosophy on the use of chemicals on the farm? Fertilizers, herbicides and pesticides can be useful tools if you know what you're doing and you use them sparingly, I believe. However, I prefer not to use them at all and I've moved more into uh, more natural ways of stimulating the soil biology. The other thing is the importance of animals to grass and grass to animals. What we see above the ground is actually feeding and working together with what is below the ground which is all the bacteria, the mycorrhizal fungi, uh, the worms, etc., etc., etc. And it's a beautiful, beautiful mosaic of life. One thing I did get in, in learning all of this was basically a dose of humility to understand that Mother Nature has been doing this for millions and millions of years. And who are we as human beings to suddenly think we're so smart that we're going to re-engineer mother nature 
and come out with a result, I think that can only end in tears. Listening to people who have spent their life work and me as just a Joe Blow coming onto a property, who would I be to argue? It makes extreme sense to me. In the three years that I have been doing this, I'm now averaging about 60 days rest and no more than one day of the cattle being on a piece of ground. In 2022, we had a huge amount of rain and towards the spring and the summer, the growth in the grasses was absolutely phenomenal. It was, it was prolific. Had I been farming as I had been before, there would have been very little feed because the cattle would have picked all over the, the property, grazed the grass flat. In the first few years, I kept getting things like pink eye, foot rot, got a lot of uh, three day sickness. And anecdotally, that is much, much reduced now. Uh, the cattle seem to be very nice and healthy. And so from that perspective, it is very, very satisfying. By not buying fertilizers, by not spending the money on diesel to spread all those things and to sow, I've taken huge costs out of the business. And really, it's mother nature that's helping me. The air, the sun, the rain, the soil. In the next episode, we look at the pros and cons of converting to cell grazing with no additional inputs. We also take a look at Peter's soils, and the results are not what we expected.